helpful. Sydney, nice to chat with you again. This is my third yes. time chatting with you, I think, because we originally chatted for this months ago when I saw it, and we also chatted for Moxie. So such a pleasure to be chatting with you again one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I absolutely love this movie, and I said it before, I think you lead this film as Makani beautifully, and it's one of my favorite yeah. horror films of the year. Um, I love, Yeah, yeah, and I'm a horror, huge horror film buff. Um, I, I love can see, I love it. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I love that your character writes poetry, and that's something that I really picked up on uh, this second time around seeing it. I'm curious, what's something that you do in your own time to take some, to take some time for yourself with the world being so crazy? You know what's so funny? I love that Makani's love for poetry is really subtle. It's almost something that I sort of forgot because I also write poetry. And I remember I was working with Henry Gaiden and he was like, maybe you can write some and we can include it in the movie and, you know, figuring that out. But uh, I love to read. I'm a big bookworm. I also love to paint. Um, I've picked up some surfing. I love surfing with my boyfriend. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, that's what I like to do in my in my quiet space. Oh, I love it. Um, well, I loved your performance in Moxie. I love Moxie so much. Um, I'm honestly just okay. curious, what is something that you learned from working with a filmmaker like Amy Poehler that you then applied to your career and process as an actor? I mean, Amy is an icon. She has so much grace and so much wisdom. Um, she's super fun as a person, but she's also extremely knowledgeable and smart and kind. And um, I always gain a lot of knowledge when I work around people like that. And I feel like it's infectious. You can't help but feel that person's energy and Amy being like this powerhouse and commanding her set, but on also just being so humble and, and kind um, is really, really eye opening. And it's just like, oh, wow, this, these are the types of people that I want in my life. These are the types of people I want to work with. Those are the types of people I want to look up to. So, you know, it's um, it really was such a, an honor to work like back to back with someone like Patrick Bryce and then booking Moxie, like literally my last day of filming there's someone inside your house and going right to that set too i was wondering if you filmed moxie after this movie that's crazy yeah i booked it right as um i was having the, the i was doing the hazing scene and i had bitch written on my forehead and like egg yolk on my face and my agents called me it's like eight o'clock at night and i was like what what do you want like hello and they were like you booked moxie and i was like oh my god what? That was just like this crazy whirlwind thing. It happens super fast. I love how it's the moment when you have bitch written on your forehead that you have that iconic moment. <laughs> of course. Of course. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, in, in this film, honestly, there are so many scary scenes. I was truly terrified watching it, especially with your character. She's around fire a lot with having to give any anything too crazy away. Did you have to overcome any of your own fears while you were filming? Because there's some times on set I'm like, wow, this looks like really scary in real life. Did you have to overcome any of those fears to end up filming a scene? Mm. You know, oddly enough, I think one of my biggest fears, um, why I conquer my fear of heights often, I'll go like zip lining or I'll try to go on a hike. Um, but it was the scene where we, we were actually in the cornfield where Ollie takes me on top, you know, he puts me on his car and we cheated that. They, we were on like this sort of, um, it was kind of like a lift, you know, to, to elevate us because we weren't tall enough. It was like soup. The cornfields were like super, super tall. So we had to get on that and there was like a harness on. And that was like probably the scariest thing I really had to do aside from, you know, getting like eating like this fake dog food and stuff in the hazing <laughs> scene. But that was that was honestly kind of scary because I was like I had to be so still in that scene and calm. Um, but at the same time, I was like, I am on a lift right now and it's really high. Oh I don't my. shit your pants. <laughs> oh my god Sydney I will now when I watch it again I'll remember that this has been so much fun talking to you I actually just spoke to your co-star Hero Finds to Finn a few days ago about first love so I'm I so love excited. Hero yes yes I wish I had more time to chat with you but um I'm so excited for first love Aww. and fans are too so I'm excited to see what you guys did in that film together oh me too Lauren thanks so much always good talking to you good chatting with you as well Sydney see you later 
Well, it's so good to see everybody. I chatted with some of you a few months ago when we did the junket for this film um, for the young adult junket. So, so glad to see some faces again. Um, I absolutely love this movie. I'm a huge horror film buff and I've seen this movie like three times now. So congratulations. I can't wait for fans to see it. Um, without giving anything too spoilery away, Every single one of your characters goes through a very intense, scary scenes, multiple scary scenes. Do you actually find, and the production design is insane on this with the real fire and everything. So do you find yourselves getting actually scared on sets and just completely disappearing into being scared? Asia, I want to begin with you first. <laughs> Yes, I probably was the scaredest person on set, just because I'm a scared <laughs> man in general. Um, so everything scared me. Things that weren't supposed to be scaring me scared me. <laughs> so yeah, I was terrified. But it was great. It was fun. Uh, uh, yeah, it's so much fun. Diego, what about for you? Yeah, it was definitely, like you said, the set design was amazing. So that was very helpful, especially with the knives coming out. I mean, it looked real. And then there was this one scene where I'm like, choking on pills and I thought I was actually gonna like choke I mean I was I, I was actually choking that scene was nice. is so scary oh yeah, my so. god it's so petrifying Ugh. Dale what about for you yeah I mean the immersiveness of the sets like you said were so helpful in that aspect and you know there is some we've all experienced some scary things no matter where you are, what you've done in your life, you've experienced something that's really, truly scared you, whether it's a scary movie when you're a kid or spiders or something like that. So it was, I felt like there was a lot to pull from, which was really, really easy. 100%. Jesse, for you, did you find there was a time when you just completely forgot you were even filming and were just so scared out of your mind? <laughs> Gosh, you know, I feel like Darby had like almost an entirely wholesome high school experience <laughs> <laughs> until the end. And then suddenly he was like, what's going on? <laughs> so, no, um, near the end, I think perhaps it was like suddenly really freaky, but most of the time I was like, what's for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> When, so when is the last time you guys have actually all been in a room together? Was it the filming for this movie? Asia, Don't when say was that. it? Uh, okay, well, Dee Dee and Jesse came over. Guys, when was, that was July. That was July, because that was right before I left. No, it was yeah. June. Was it June? Yeah, I, <laughs> it yeah, June. I think so, yeah. Yeah, and that was really fun. And that was the last time I saw them. And Dale, Dale's in Canada. I don't know if you know that. Um, East yeah. Coast Canada, so... But Dale was my roommate for a little bit. Mm. Yep. Really oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. It seems like you guys had like the best time just like working together on set. I love it so much. Um, well, I love how the character Makani, something that she does for herself is she writes poetry. And it kind of got me thinking, I've been speaking to a lot of actors right now within this, you know, crazy world that we're living in. And it's just so important to find something to, to do for yourself and, and to spend time for yourself and not just be a workaholic all the time. So what's something that you guys all enjoy, you know, stewing and, and spending time for, for yourself? Asia, I want to begin with you. Oh, well, during the pandemic, like in 2020, um, I started up painting, which has never been like a hobby of mine, but this is the thing. It's it's called like art by numbers. It's from Amazon. Oh, yeah. And so it tells you like where to paint. And that is more soothing for me because I'm kind of a perfectionist. So if I had to do something by myself, even if it's for enjoyment, I'm trying to make it perfect. And I'm like, it has to be Picasso, even though I'm not a painter. But when it like <laughs> tell me where to go, I'm like, oh, this is soothing. This is relaxing. And then you get a beautiful product out of it. I love that. I want to take up painting by numbers because I need somebody to like tell me what to do when yes. I'm painting. Yeah. Jesse, and what about for you? What's something that you do for yourself? Um, you know, I got really into Depop, which my wallet didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of, lot of thrift clothes. I'm trying to be more uh, eco-conscious with like what, like everything that I own, but like especially clothes because I think, you know, they the fast fashion industry can be really bad for the environment. So Depop ended up being really cool and there's great stuff on there. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll have to check it out. Dale, what about for you? Um, golf, really <laughs> lots of golf. Um, it's, it's good because it's a solo sport. So I can, I can go out and, you know, like you said, take some time for myself, relax, just focus on what I'm doing. So it's helped me, you know, step away a little bit during all of this. 
Yeah. And, do you and get outside. You make it really quick for you. Uh, I, 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 at the beginning of the pandemic, I had started working on music and I'm also getting really into pool. Uh, me and my friends play all the time and we like to go to like the billiards bar and just have fun and yeah we're, we're really good we're really good Ooh, <laughs> maybe that's something you guys can do when you like, get i'm a pro <laughs> yeah yeah i really am i really am i know that i know yeah, he was a pool shark now yeah no i really am i got called a pool shark when i when i went to the bar i mean i lost what? i'm not the best but i'm good <laughs> <laughs> well thank you all so much for your time today i appreciate it i can't wait for fans to see the film thank, thank you Lauren. thank you so much, so much lauren bye Hi, and Henry, congratulations on this film. I've seen it two or three times now because I interviewed the cast months ago for the Young uh, Adult Junket, uh, which was so much fun. So I saw it forever ago. Um, I love it. I'm a huge horror film buff. Um, so I, I it's one of my, I told us telling Sydney, this is one of my favorite horror films of the year. I oh, love how the, per yeah, no, congratulations on it. I love the production design of the film and I don't want to get too spoilery, but there are scenes where there are is some intense fire. How challenging is that as a filmmaker to work with the work with real life fire and did you find yourself being kind of overwhelmed and scared on set Patrick I want to begin with you yeah I mean I was overwhelmed and scared on set it wasn't I wasn't I wasn't scared of the fire <laughs> I was scared of not being able to shoot everything I needed to shoot in time more, oh more wow but, but that was that was real fire in that field yeah like that was it was insane they would just turn it on and off and it would just go up and then it would shut off yeah in it, was, a second. it was a gas line and so like just with the you know just as with the all the kill sequences in the movie you know we tried to do everything we could as practically as possible and then you know augment it with some vfx later on but let that just sort of be like the final touches of the painting as opposed to like you know you know going full full on with the cgi which like for me like doesn't always work you know you just always feel the artifice of that and so you know we had the same approach as we did with our kills to the fire and that was to, you know, surround them in an actual flame that was burning the entire time. So it was, it was extremely tough. Yeah. It wasn't always, uh, it didn't always work perfectly. <laughs> That's true. Um, but, but I think it definitely added to like the realism of it for sure. Oh, 100%. Where did you guys film this? We actually filmed the entire movie in Vancouver, Canada. Oh, you did. And, uh, which was, you know, a, a bit of a challenge because, you know, the film is supposed to like be completely steeped in Nebraska. And so there are these scenes, especially like, you know, the, the scenes in the cornfield where we're, we're literally painting out beautiful mountain ranges at sunset in the background uh, so that we could, you know, get that flat Nebraskan feel. Um, but luckily there's enough flat land in that area where we're able to sort of, and luckily there were, there were cornfields, you know. No, but, but they actually bought a, a field that without any corn and planted the corn and let it grow months before. And then we shot it. Yeah. I had a brief period as an owner of a, of a full field of corn yeah. that we eventually burned down. You could have had a whole other business. I, w I used to be a farmer. <laughs> for, for that's, that's literally an insane amount of pressure to get it right. Like you said. So now I understand about how you're scared. Um, <laughs> Henry, um, I, I loved Makani's poetry in this and how oh. like that was such an important thing for her character. Um, is that something that you you are personally into and did you I guess specifically write the poetry verses that are that she says I did not because I think that is probably the hardest form of writing that exists to get it right <laughs> and, and even if I'm trying to be a, a very smart teenage girl I still think that would be insulting <laughs> by what I'd written um so I uh no we actually I we ended up like I ended up finding a few actual poets um and then we ended up using one woman uh, and her poetry to, to to create sort of a personality for Makani. So we used one poet, and um, and but yeah, that was there from the beginning. I'm glad you responded to that. That was um, that was the side of her that was to her true self, and that she only shared with herself. And that was something that kept changing while we were making the movie. I think like you know like while while we were actually shooting the movie, I was you know busy directing. But then Henry would be around and he'd come and give me like little poetry updates because yeah. you know, he was going on his whole poetry journey of trying to get that right. 
And it, you know, what ended up being in the movie was so lovely because it was, you know, this, this woman's poetry that was written almost a hundred years ago or like 50, oh, 50 yeah. 60 years ago. Years ago yeah. And so much of it spoke directly to the, like the themes of our movie. Yeah. And I did, to be fair, I had to adapt some of it because, yeah. but yeah, so I changed a little bit of her words, which God rest her, but um, <laughs> may she rest. But, uh, but no, the, uh, there was, yeah, the, we had to like rights issues with poets. I had to like write. I sent a handwritten letter to England to one person, <laughs> and, like, and they, they responded three months after we wrapped production. So we didn't use that. I mean, like it was all sorts of things. But yeah, this is literally the most detailed answer about like a bit of the film that I've ever heard of. But I love it so much because it just shows how detailed the two of you are. Patrick and Henry, this was a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today, and I can't wait for fans to see this on Netflix on October sixth. Thanks for your kind words about thank the movie. You. Too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Bye bye. Appreciate you.